every time you fill up the tank, the price of petrol seems to have gone up. The problem is, there's only so much oil, and demand is growing at an alarming rate. Not long ago, President Bush said the US was addicted to oil. And that's true of every developed country. We desperately need viable alternative fuel sources. But what most countries are still pondering, Sweden is putting into practice. And the whole world is watching Linköping, a city of 100,000 south of Stockholm, where an energy revolution is taking place. The locals care less about the rising cost of oil and more about cowpat production. Splot. Because most of the town's buses, taxis, even the train, run on a methane-rich clean fuel created from very smelly waste like this. One of the reasons Lynn Sherping started this experiment is that this lovely old town absolutely stank of diesel. Methane is a clean burning fuel and has no odour whatsoever. In fact, like natural gas, they choose to add a slight smell so you can tell if there's a leak. Lynn Sherping started producing biogas 15 years ago. Since then, the town has never looked or smelt better. Carl Lillehoek runs his car on methane-rich biogas and commutes to work on a biogas-powered bus. Hey, Carl. Hello. Ah, so, this is a biogas bus. Yes, it's comfortable and clean, so it's perfect to go on the bus in Elincha. Unlike fossil fuels like petrol and diesel, biogas has very low emissions, adds no carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, is renewable and can be produced locally. And it's up to 30% cheaper than petrol at the pump. How do the emissions coming out of this bus compare to a petrol or diesel vehicle? There are no emissions coming out from this bus. It's totally clean. All the city's 70 buses use biogas, reducing carbon dioxide emissions by 90%. The gas is piped underground to a refuelling depot, which can refuel 60 buses at a time. Taxis have dual fuel systems, biogas and petrol. They can also run on natural gas if cow dung production takes a nosedive. Lynn Sherping's train is also the world's first to, you guessed it, be powered by biogas. Twin diesels have been replaced by gas engines. While it's not clear how many cowpats to the kilometre or mile it gets, it has a top speed of 130 kilometres per hour, carries 54 passengers with a range of 600 kilometres or 360 miles. Whether it's for trains, cars or buses, the beauty of biogas is it doesn't have to be shipped in a tanker all the way from the Middle East. It's made locally. All the raw ingredients can be found inside this building. When they first started producing biogas here 10 years ago, the mix contained 50% that stuff, manure. Today, a higher percentage of slaughterhouse and industrial food waste is used because protein and fat provides more energy per kilo. Don't be scared. Lynn Sherping's biogas plant uses about 100,000 tonnes of organic waste per year, all gathered locally. 10 years ago, it was literally going to waste. Now it's creating a sustainable energy source. The plant works like a mechanical swamp producing methane, also known as marsh gas, by starving the waste matter of oxygen. The organic waste material is brought to this plant by truck. Most of it is unloaded into this trap, then it's mixed with water and turned into a nice slurry. Mm. All that is then blended together in this reception tank and it turns into a horrid, homogenous sludge. Oh, yuck. It smells really bad. Next, it's cleaned by steam heating it to above 70 degrees Celsius for at least an hour. This kills all the dangerous bacteria. After it's cooled, it's pumped into two big digester tanks. And this is like a natural swamp. The temperature is kept at about 38 degrees Celsius and there's no oxygen the perfect environment for all the different microorganisms to do their work. They break down the material and they produce the gas. The whole process, turning a warm soup of organic waste into an energy-rich fuel, takes about a month. The finished product filling this tanker is about 97% methane. 
The plant produces 300,000 cubic metres of gas a month. One cubic metre of biogas has the same energy as a litre of petrol or diesel. Biogas isn't the only thing produced. The material left over after digestion makes an excellent biofertiliser and it's sold to 35 farms in the area. Completing Lynn Sherping's inspiring alternative energy cycle, the fertiliser is returned to the farms that provided the raw material using the biogas powered train. While Lynn Sherping is leading the way towards an oil free future, other centres are fast catching on. Could this be done in all the towns in Sweden? Definitely. I mean, I think about 10, 10 centres today is doing it in Sweden. And it's no problem to do it in all of them. It's just using the biogas to already have in the town. Companies like Volvo are already selling biogas cars straight from the showroom. And if Swedish motorists needed an added incentive, they've got it. No fuel tax, no road tolls, and free parking in council car parks. Now this isn't the total solution to the coming oil crisis, but it's a great start. So have a think about the city you're living in. Do you reckon it could do with a dose of Linköping-inspired energy? I suspect so.